everyone. So today we're going to be making our heart tree. This is made out of rose quartz and it's just a simple um, acrylic or glass bead here. So to start we need to make the base like this. All right, so we'll take 16 gauge um, dead soft aluminum pair wire. Um, I'm doing it in, it's aluminum. Um, you can do it in, <clears throat> what other one do I have? That's an 18 gauge. It's rubbed off, but it's 18. Um, antique copper, um, any other color that you want, but I'm gonna do the silver, the silver color, it's aluminum. So we're gonna cut off one strand about oh, 10 inches. I eyeball it, it does not matter. The size doesn't have to be exactly. We're going to make this. So depending on the size of the length of your wire will depend on the size of your base for your tree. You can do it bigger, you can do it smaller. Um, just remember it's, you need to have it big enough to form the tree on the inside. So if you have it small, then, well, you're gonna have a really small tree. So when I form it, I have about 35, about 35 milli, no, no, I say about 40, 40, between the very tip here and the base. So that's good. And they're not all the same. As you can see, this one's a little bit smaller. So what we're going to do is take our mandrel and if you saw the Facebook post and you got your tools already, you will see this is not a mandrel. It is one of those little nifty screwdriver thingies. I don't have a mandrel. I make do with what I have. So you don't have to go out and buy it. If you have something around, um, you can use like the ends of your pliers or um, a pen, preferably a more rounded one. Up to you. Um, I will have links down below in the description for all the tools and materials. Um, so if you didn't see that Facebook link there, you can still get them. All right, so we want to find the center. It's roughly right there. And all we're going to do, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't get out the measuring tape and find the dead center. I'm going to take and just wrap it each side around just like that to form a circle. Okay. I keep it on the mandrel long enough to get my base shape so that it doesn't turn. Now we want to take the arms here. That's what I call the arms. And bend them up just a bit. So you've kind of like a it's not entirely 90 degree but it's not straight across. And then this is where you're going to want to curve your ends here. You're going to form your heart. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Drawing hearts for me is, they never look the same. So you're just going to take each side here and slowly bring it around. And, okay, curve this one some more. As you can see, one side is longer than the other. That is fine. Alright, so once I have this basic thing here, I'll take it off my mandrel. And I'll kind of squish and play with it a bit to make the heart. If I see, okay, we got to... if you're really good at drawing out hearts, 
you can take and draw it out on a piece of paper and put your wire over it and kind of bend your wire with the picture. Again, my hearts are always lopsided. As you can see, look, it's not perfect. Eh, that one's kind of, but you get it. They're all going to come out different. Again, you can draw it out. And I think that's going to be good here work so what you're gonna do once you get the basics again you can make it a bit smaller and squeeze it in sometimes if like this isn't down enough I'll slip my mandrel back in just enough to kind of shape it like that to bring that curve down more all right so I'm happy with that good enough all right so you have these two pieces that cross here so we want to hold them both in your fingers like so and carefully twist like a twist tie and I just do about twice so it secures it this way it's connected and you can come back through sometimes it'll distort your um, base here so you could just go back through and do any bending. If you get any kinks, like say this came into a sharper point, <clears throat> you can take like your nylon job pliers and kind of just fix it. I'll pinch it around just so I have somewhat the same. And then you have your base. So now what we're going to do, we're going to create the tree. Now, the next step is totally dependent on you. And I'll show you why. So here we have 26 gauge silver plated silver parawire. And then you can use a 28 gauge. I wouldn't go above like a 24, 22. You, you're, you're pushing it. It's a little thicker and the 22. Yeah, it's going to make for the tree to be thicker and bigger. So if you have a large base, you can use uh, like a 22 gauge, but I wouldn't go any, any lower than that. But, so you're gonna take the 26 gauge wire. Now, let me show for example, this had seven, seven wires. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna create 14. So you're gonna end up having 14 little branches which will come and twist into the bigger branches which will twist into the trunk which you'll tie off here into um, the roots now with these I didn't do the whole have the roots come out this was just a simpler design here but you're going to want um, if you want a fuller tree, you'll need more of the wire to make your branches. If you want a more simpler um, tree, then you could use less. Um, I try to go with at least five. This one I just did seven. Just because, no simple reason. Other than that's what I felt like doing. So you'll take about... I say about seven inches or so. no, sorry, my bad. Um, that's what you'll have after you bend it. So you want to take about 12 inches. And you snip it off. Now again, depending on how many branches you need to cut that many pieces of wire 
And I am doing these a little bit bigger than what I normally would. But I use my scrap wire for everything. If I need to add wire um, into a project and I've already got like, a large piece of scrap that I can do and I don't need that much to add in, um, I'll use that instead of cutting it off the spool. Um, or if I'm testing, like was with these, I actually had a large piece of scrap wire from this and that's how I came up with the design for I'm like, oh, I could do a heart and see about making a tree on it. So I use a piece of scrap wire and that's what happened. So I want to do five. Um, yeah. I am using um, the flush cutters. You can use regular wire cutters. I prefer those because it gives me a flat edge. Well, it gives me a flat edge, but like if I'm cutting wire like this, one side's going to be flat, while the other side's going to be pinched because when you cut like that, this side, the piece of wire that goes, you know, we'll do this here. So. I take and I cut on that side that side is going to be flat it's gonna be flush so the other side that was cut with this is going to be pinched down the camera will focus Go. Anyways, it's pinched. So regardless of how you do it. So to me, it doesn't matter. I always use the, the flush side, especially if I'm cutting like the ends after wrapping. That way there's no pokey bits, anything like that. All right, two, three, five. All right, so we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna get our base. All right, so what we're gonna do here is take our wire and kind of find the center. Now with this one, trying to here, let me use this one. I made that one just a tad bit. Too. All right, so we're gonna take. And it doesn't matter which side you use. Totally up to you. But we're gonna take our wire and hold it up to the base of the neck just like that kind of follow the flow there so you see it's not covering through the hole like that it's actually going a little bit under i'm going to take this side and wrap it into about i try to do three one two you can do two, four, five, totally up to you. And then we've got that there. All right, and just squish it in there. And then we're gonna do the same to the other side here. Two, three. like that so you, as you can see that wire is just kind of hiding under there and just squish it in all right so our second wire since we have five we're gonna we have this one here and we're gonna do two on each side of the heart or the each side of that one so we're just gonna take find the center And then we're just going to wrap it three times. You can do it two, five, whichever. I like doing three. Make sure it's nice and secure. So there's three. And make sure you got them tightly together. 
Oh, that's four. It works. And then we're just going to slide it down to there. And then repeat with the other side. Now, like with this one, we kind of have, I have more on this side. So it kind of curves and is growing more over here. You can do that. Um, like I said, I have seven, so I have one, actually six on the side. So one, two, three, four here. Our middle one that we started with, which is five, and then six here. So we have one over here. We have the rest on this side. And this, if you want to do it that way, you can. You don't have to do it exactly the same way as me. Um, none of my pieces come out the same honestly so even if I try I can try to copy my own work and there's always going to be some slight difference either um, I saw a different way to do it or I decided to put a swirl somewhere and three slide it over see it's gonna be different now keep your wire you can either keep them down here behind the base or you can move them up out of the way entirely up to you I'm gonna try to keep them here so they're not too much in the way all right and find the center and again a lot of this is repetition. So once you get that first wire on there, it's basically doing the same thing for the rest of them. And then same with the creation of the tree. If you start adding your leaves, this is what you want to call them, um, to one side. You can do that for the rest of the sides too. Alright, our last one here. in the center and just wrap three times and again I choose three you could do four you could do two I recommend you do more than one just so you have it secure and it doesn't run away on you all right so now and squish all these up to the center. They don't, they're not going to stay there. Just so you know, your tree isn't going to, unless you choose to, your tree's not going to look like that. Um, you're going to branch them out. Alright, so. I'm just looking to see if you want more, if you want something to come down to here down out to the curve in the middle it's kind of even spaced so I think I like that again entirely up to you how you do it um, there's no wrong or right way to do it so once you get this spaced out you're going to ch take chipped stones now these are rose quartz in my rings anyway I mean they're just little chips and they've got a hole in them somewhere and they come in all different sizes and we're just going to take let's start with this one here you want to start in the center these are stationary and they're separated so what you're gonna do is Pull up the wire. Yeah, I know they're in the way, but this is going to help with that. You see it's that wire there. And you're going to put, I put about three. A lot of it depends on their size. If they're bigger ones like that, it might only be two. I might alternate to where there's 
a um, couple small and one big. Um, if there's flats, you might need five flat stones to make your thing. So after having a few on there, that's good. Because that big one takes up a lot of space. So that's why we're going to... We only have three. Two little ones and a big, thicker one. Okay. Don't do anything with that yet. Just pull it up out of the way. So then you want to take your next wire over. Right there. So you can see it's going to be that one. Do the same thing. Just add your chip stones. Probably going to keep with the three here. And if you have a longer tree, so you made a, a larger heart, um, and you wanted your trunk to be longer, then you would, um, you wouldn't put as many. Uh, because the more length you have in these, the smaller your trunk is. Now, if you um, only want a little trunk, you could probably bring them down just a bit more here. But I find that three is good because with you twisting the wire and then creating the trunk, the trunk does take up a lot of space. And then we have the, the circular bead here that will kind of fill up some, some dead space there too. But again, it's entirely up to you how you want to make your tree. Okay, so we've got three on there. All right. So we're going to do before we move on is we're going to bring those two wires together and twist several times. Um, I will do about four or five, just like that. Don't go all the way down because, you know, we're going to bring the twisted pieces together to form the bigger branch and into the trunk. Um, but just do enough to secure it, um, so that it is out of your way. Um, and you can actually kind of put it up. Now when you move this wire, this one is attached to the same, so it's going to do just what it's doing there. So with this one, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it on these three wires and twist these three together. I don't like having a single wire that just has a stone on it, so, or it just has stones on it and there's no twisting. To me it doesn't look natural, but then again it is a gemstone tree, so um, I don't think anything will be natural about this. So again, I'll go through and put our beads on. And you don't have to use rose quartz. You can use any type of chip stone. Um, if you don't have any chip beads, you can use seed beads. Mm. Is that gonna stay? So let me pull this up here and show you. So I have these on here, and as you can see, the hole through that one is relatively close to the the edge. Now what can happen with this is when you twist the wire, that wire can push up through and the beetle break. So try not to use those, not on my trees. Um, I'll use them for other things. I don't want the, you know, to be twisting it or wearing it and to be, you know, the stone break. It happens. All right, so we get that one with three. We won't put four on this one and three on that one. Just to make that a bit longer. And some of these are like really big. I mean, that that's like the size of two all together. There's a hole on that. Maybe I could use... Oh, I can. All right. So, with how the hole is... No. Won't look right. Never mind. One. Two. Three. 
we're going to do four on that one. And then one. No, not too close. Three. Oh, those are smaller, so I can do four. Alright. So we'll do the same thing here. We've got these three wires that have the stones on it. Make sure your stones are kind of pushed up towards the end and there's not any huge gaps. And then, again, twist like a bird thing. You can take if you want and separate kind of to get a good twist on them. Alright, so I'll compare it. See, now you can see, and then these will twist together to form a bigger branch. And then we'll have the same here with these. All right, so we just, I try to pick those up to put them out of the way. Now this time, I'm going to do three, and then two. And again, it's all entirely up to you what you want to do. Um, number wise, how many branches, um, stone color. I'm giving you the, the canvas, so to speak. It's your imagination that turns it into the completed work of art. I can't find the hole. Oh, well, there it is. All right, so we'll do three. All right, those are small. Let's do a fourth. No, that's kind of broken. All right, four. And then... Now I've seen some trees that don't even have um, stone chips on them. It's just the wire and they look really good. Maybe I'll do one for you. I'm not a fan of it myself. Um, just because I like the color that you can add with the stones. Um, but I've seen some really cool looking ones that didn't have stones. It was just wire. Grab some more beads here. Granted, I've only got a couple more branches, but I'm kind of picky when it comes to the size, the whole placement. Okay, got those three that have them. Make sure you push the beads down to the base so that there, there's no gaps. I mean, you can have gaps, again, up to you. Um, it's gonna happen at one point, and like, you know, with time, if a bead does um, break, you're going to have the gap there. Um, I need to get this here. Alright, that's good. Alright, and then the last one here, or last two, to make the last branch, we're going to... Do this relatively quickly. One, two, so 
these holes can be hard to find. Three. Oh, all right, two, two, and then third. No. Again, being picky. I could just throw them all on here, but it comes down to like the craftsmanship. If you've got a necklace that the hole is like right at the edge and the wind blows and it would break because of the pressure, you know, you're not gonna, what's that say about your work? That little extra goes a long way. So, got those two. All right, and then we're gonna twist my red tie. All right, so, now, all right, I'm going to take and bring these two bundles together and twist. If it'll cooperate. You have them both twisted together. There's no particular length. Um, you want to do it enough to where your base is going to come down for your trunk. And then you're going to do the same with these two bundles. Alright. And twist. So they're about, they cross at the same the twisting stops about the same spot. And then you're going to take the two that you have and twist them down. Oops, sorry. Now, this is a point. Okay. We have all these. Now, you can either do it straight down without the roots. And then all you do is you would twist until the trunk hits just about the base. And then you take your ends and just wrap them around all the way. And you'd be done with that. Or in this case, you can somewhat separate your ends. And then what we're going to do is make the roots. So it's just a matter of you can take like the two ends here. You can twist a couple of times. Then you'll take So you just twist till you get to the end, and then you want to attach it. So you'll wrap it <clears throat> around. Again, I'm doing about three times. And squish it together. So you have it just like that. And then take the second piece and do the same thing. Now, the more wires you have, if you do the roots, <clears throat> the more crowded it will be down here. So, once you get towards the, the end, you might have some crowding. Three. All right. So, 
So we'll get the next set here. <clears throat> and you don't have to twist them all. You don't have to have them twisted like that. Again, entirely up to you. Two, two, two. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I had enough to do all of them in twos. So we're just going to take the next two in line and twist. And then, again, same thing. Wrap it around your base a couple times. Now, <clears throat> I haven't cut these yet. Um, I'm just going to keep them out of the way. You don't have to cut them down completely. If you want to do like spirals, you can do that. Um, I will cut them. But I try to do that all at the same time. That way I'm not having to cut and then go back and then cut and then go back. and yeah. Now these are going to go down. So I've got two off to the side and then there'll be two off to the side and I'm going to have one going down here. We have that, so let's wrap it around the base and be careful of that wire up there. to do stuff on camera and tend to hit the camera. Alright, so I'm just positioning those around. And then once I get these tied, I'm going to show you some other things you could do with the roots here. Again, finished product is entirely up to you. So those over there. I'm throwing stone beads on the floor. So I'm going to twist these. And have the root effect. Sorry, I keep going off camera. I'm trying to look around the camera when I do this part. I'm so used to like holding it up on my chest when I do things like this. So I'm still trying to make sure I stay in camera for you. And three. Let's scratch it through there. And then three, almost done, the tedious part. One. Two. I said two. And three. Squish it together. Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, now last bundle here. All right, so same thing. Twist and then secure. Mm -hmm. 
And last one. Alright, and squish them into each other, make sure it's nice and tight. Perfect. So now we're gonna find my round nose pliers. And we're going to make this look a bit more natural. I'm going to take and just put my pliers in and kind of twist, not so much that it unravels them or breaks them, but just enough to give it the, the zigzag because, you know, not all roots are straight. Right. And you can do that with like the branches up here because you know tree branches aren't straight. I see how that must scoot this down just so I have room. All right, now I'm gonna go through with my flush cutters and close to the base as I can without cutting the base or cutting the other wires. So got those cut off. Now we need to take um here's my flat nose, my little one. And I just pinch down those edges that we cut so that it doesn't snag on anything or slice your finger. I've had that happen. Just take and pinch it down. And when you when you pinch it down, I always take and rotate it with the way the wire's going, and that also helps tighten. Um, that way, if it was loose when you secured it. All right. So this wire right here. Don't ask me what I did. Apparently I cut it. So not a problem. I'm just going to take, if you can see that, right? Focus. That wire right there. Apparently either I didn't wrap it around or something. So we are just going to kind of loop it up and tuck it to make it work. Looks like and then give it a little pinch just to keep it out of the way. And I always rub my finger to make sure it's not going to stag me. So yeah, if, if you mess up, you can fix it. It's not the end of the process. Oh, and the mail must be here. Sorry about that. Never fails. <laughs> Mail or FedEx? Expecting a package. I still don't like how it is. Alright. We have our roots done. No. No sticky bits. Hmm. Really good.
Okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to. Okay. Now, what we want to do is, <clears throat> you can be done with this. You don't have to do this step. It's just an added thing. What you'll do is actually take a piece of your scrap wire that you just cut off of the base. And you'll get the, the flat um, 20 millimeter, 15, <clears throat> it's about a 15 millimeter or 14, I can't remember. <clears throat> And what you'll do, I'm trying to see if I want to, where I want to put it. Okay, so you'll take and string your, just a piece of scrap wire, it doesn't need to be very long, on. And you'll secure it to the base. I'm, I'm not putting mine on, that's why I'm not doing it with you. And so once you've wrapped it two, three times, you'll then go and secure it in the tree branch. So you would bring it in and it's just simple hiding the wire <clears throat> and blending it in. So you have the little, and the idea is moon. It's a moon with it. You know what? I think I'll keep, I'll do it on here. I like how that sits. All right, so let me, You might secure the wire first. Mm. Two. All right, three. So we got it secured. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me see. I just tied it three times. Two, three. And then we'll find a spot in the tree to kind of hide the wire that probably will be perfect put it in there one all right i'm gonna get my pliers because i don't want to accidentally Okay, and you've secured it. You'll just do the same thing. Cut off. Oh, Got to cut the excess off from around the base. wonder why I had a stray looking wire there. All right, so there you go. No, we're not done. We don't leave this here. All right, so. Mama, what? All right, so. What we're going to do is we're going to not get ahead of myself. What I take is this part of my around this place is the box part and let me show you right there the very tip and kind of squish that down because it's dead soft it, it makes it flat it doesn't bring it together i mean merge it together anything like that you can hammer it if you want but i just take it and do that and then cut the excess off. And then I'm going to take right, 
put it next to it, just like that. Um, and with my nylon gel pliers, kind of just squish it down. So see, and it's not really, all depends how you cut it. Um, Now I'll take two and I'll squish it some more if I think it needs it. And then I'll trim it. I know it's kind of a... Alright, here. So now there's your end. And you can position it how you like if you want to skew some over. And it doesn't matter um, which way you have it. Like on this one, I wrapped it so that the tree came down the front so I could tell what the front was. But there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, pardon all the interruptions, kids, dogs, husband, uh, everything like that. Um, we will be having another video on Friday. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but at the time of recording, I haven't set the schedule completely. Monday is our metaphysical corner. Wednesday is a water wrapping or tutorial of something like this. And Friday, we're looking into bringing in a new series, just not entirely sure which one it is yet. So if you want to purchase these items used in today's tutorial, just follow the link down in the description as well as check out our facebook and our website where you will find these for sale uh, and again any questions comments leave them down below um, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell for notifications i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time bye